Welcome back. Florida has become the epicenter of a culture war fight that's been encompassing and eclipsing all other culture war fights, education. Governor Ron DeSantis has made education a key political wedge issue, ramping up legislation surrounding education across the state as he weighs his own potential 2024 presidential run. A new bill introduced earlier this month would bar students from going by preferred pronouns in school, even if their parents say it's okay. And another bill introduced earlier this week would block degree programs on diversity at state colleges, building on legislation that already limits how teachers across lower levels can teach diversity in classrooms. And earlier this week, a charter school principal was forced to resign after parents complained that sixth graders were shown, quote, inappropriate content as they studied Michelangelo's sculpture, David. The school's chair, parents didn't like the, quote, woke indoctrination of their kids. I'm joined now by someone pushing against these efforts with the backing of the Biden White House. It's the president of the American Federation of Teachers, Randy Weingarten. Garden, good to see you. Thanks for coming here. First, I want to start with you have been name checked. You have been attacked and weaponized. You're not an elected official. Um, I'm still sort of startled by what Mike Pompeo said about you. Um, how's that changed your life? You know, it's, um, I mean, I'm also married to a rabbi. And so <laughs> thankful. Oh, that's nice. I mean, but, you know, we're, you know, we're a gay couple. And so when you get at home a big an email that says that has your apartment and has you in there and says, be careful for your family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the anti-Semitism that's going on. Mm -hmm. Look, it's chilling. You know, it's it's chilling and it changes your life because you know that people are out to get you mm -hmm. because of who you are and what you represent. But this is the thing. What it does for me, it makes me want to do more to actually help public schools be the best they can be. It makes me want to do more to practice my religion mm -hmm. when we see anti-Semitic uh, events. It makes me want to do more to see kids who are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. What I care about are the people who are anonymous and isolated, who don't have years of experience right. in this in this work. But the point of all the bullying is to make you try to shut up. And as a history teacher, I right. know Tim Schneider and Applebaum, they'd all tell you that um, that apathy is the tool of the autocrat. Right. So, you know, so it's, you know, the, the page that DeSantis is using, it's autocracy. What, what Trump did was to try to create so much chaos and fear mm. that you want the autocrat. And what America is about, and again, I'm sorry that I'm going back to my AP history days teaching, what America is about is about both the unity and the diversity. And we have to be a country that actually lifts all up, believes in all. And that's what the American dream has been about. And that's what public schools are supposed to be about. So I feel like we've lost the debate on, uh, we're sort of lost. How should a public school curriculum, do you think people expect a public school curriculum to reflect the local values of a community? Or a public school curriculum should reflect the national identity of the country. So a public school curriculum has to actually reflect both. Mm -hmm. And it's not as if these are the first times we've had these wars. Think about the Scopes trial yeah, no, 100 we, years ago. We do ago. It about every 30 years, yeah. actually. So, we the Scopes trial, then we did it in the 50s, right. with segregation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But what happens is, the point is, because the only institution in the United States of America that is for all, that creates opportunity for all, mm -hmm. are public schools. So, of course, every social issue is going to walk through the doors of public schools, not just our kids, but every social issue. And the teachers are the first responders to all of it. So how is it really done? There's 50 states. There's 13,000 school districts. Mm -hmm. That's why you have lay boards of education. But that's why you also have a process in states of building curriculum that includes parents and teachers. So one of the things that Youngkin did was he... Um, Glenn seized, Youngkin, Governor Glenn, of Virginia. Exactly. We've been talking Florida. Sorry. That's no, okay. He seized on a mistake that 
and, and he is a dear friend, Terry McAuliffe made. Mm -hmm. Of course parents have to be involved in kids' education. That's what teachers have wanted for years. We need parents as our partners. And, and, but the exploitation now is, both with Governor Junkin, Governor DeSantis, think about what's happening. We have a mental health crisis. We have real economic issues. We just went through COVID and all of that. Mm -hmm. So there's gun, all the gun, all right. the shootings. There's an anxiety that people feel that the culture wars exacerbate and deepen. Mm -hmm. And what we in public schools have to do is we got to do reading, writing, and arithmetic, but we also have to overcome all of this. Mm -hmm. And the culture wars have made it harder to do that. And then on top of it, what DeSantis is doing by taking $4 billion mm -hmm. out of public schools in, in Florida, how are they going to actually respond to do the work like CTE and experiential learning and overcome learning loss and overcome the mental health crisis if we don't have the teachers or the money to do that. So Florida is going to turn into a three-tier system. Um, it sort of already has this way in Dade County, where you have those with money can do private, those who will take money and, and want to shop for a charter, and that's a 50-50. Some are great. Some don't do so well. And then those that, for whatever reason, the parents doesn't, they don't know how to, maybe they don't know how to navigate the system and they, they're going to be stuck with their neighborhood school. And but Chuck, so, so guess how do, what? How, is that a successful school system? No, of course not. Okay. But guess what? Even in Florida, still right now, after all of the voucher work, mm -hmm. all of the vouchers, all of the charters, the vast majority of kids in Florida still go to public schools mm -hmm. and want to go to public schools and their parents want to send them to public schools. The vast majority of kids in the United States of America go to public schools. But what DeSantis has done with this new voucher system is it's not about um, what the old ones were. This is now just taking money from public schools and giving it to wealthy parents so that they can send their kids to private schools. Well, this is a debate that isn't going to end today, and I got like 17,000 more questions, but I'm running out of time. Randy Weingarten, it's good to see Thank you. you. Thanks for taking a couple minutes here. Thank you. And we'll be back. We'll do this again. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.